Good evening and welcome to our very first uh, Gavi's Senior Hurling Championship uh, preview. And uh, here this evening we're going to discuss the championship, we discuss the format of it, and we're also going to uh, discuss the various games, we're going to discuss club or coverage of it, which is comprehensive, um, and we'll also have a, a few people putting their necks on the line. And indeed, when you see the panel, you'll realize the necks we have on this <laughs> particular broadcast. <laughs> and we will be putting uh, their necks on the line and telling us who are going to reach the final uh, before we play our first game. Now, obviously, uh, we have to say that um, Clubber TV, there is going to be uh, comprehensive coverage on Clubber. So now's the time to get your annual pass. You're going to get all most of the games in a comprehensive list of games, plus maybe previews and reviews as well of the Kerry County Championship. But it's a lot more than that because later on in the year you'll have the club football championship to watch in the comfort of your own home, and you'll also have the county senior football championship uh, to watch. And there's other stuff as well later on, including maybe the odd camogie game. Um, and of course, as well as that, you have uh, championships from other counties as well, like Tipperary, Monaghan, uh, there's a list of them. So if you check into the clover.ie uh, website or on Twitter, you'll get the links and you'll get uh, the extent of uh, the coverage that we have. Now, as well as that, you must remember that the advantage of not alone getting clover um, it's unlike other uh, streaming services and broadcasting services in the fact that you can actually watch the game as it happens, whether you're in Artfert or whether you're <coughs> in Killarney, London, Hong Kong or Melbourne or Sydney or New York. It's for the diaspora, so lads like Barry Manny, who's in Australia, and Owen Ross, I'm sure will be watching uh, their teams, <coughs> uh, Barry Duff and uh, Crot O'Neill's, on uh, the streaming service. The other beauty about it, advantage of it, you don't have to watch it on the evening that it's on if you're otherwise engaged. You can go back later that night or the following day and watch it. You can have countless replays on it. So really, it's a wonderful service. So click on the link. Uh, it's up and will be up on, uh, at the end of uh, this broadcast. And uh, you can uh, sign up. And with Father's Day coming this weekend, might be a nice gift to give to the the father uh, a pass so he can watch all those games now i have to introduce you to our panel and remember as well that the um championship uh, has been since uh, 2011 2012 i think sponsored by garvey's uh, the garvey super value the garvey's group and uh, we'd like to thank uh, tomas garvey and the garvey family for their wonderful sponsorship of the championship and uh, they do the football championship as well but we're here to discuss the hurling uh, championship there's a couple of lads here in the panel who would swallow a football before they would actually bounce it and kick it so <laughs> i will introduce you to our panel and it's a mixed panel it's a panel of intelligentsia and a panel of uh, fellas who uh, let's put it like this um, would not be allowed into a respectable establishment. Uh, now, first of all, I'll go to the uh, intelligence side of our panel, and that's uh, Tommy O'Connor. Now, Tommy is well known to the people in Kerry. Uh, he is uh, a lover of books because he's the county librarian. And as well as that, he's the PRO of the North Kerry Hurling Board. He was the development officer of the North Kerry Hurling Board. And he also um, wrote a book at that time about the history of North uh, Kerry Hurling, but he never mentioned James <coughs> McCarthy. <coughs> uh, now, talking about uh, Tommy, Tommy has two county hurling championship medals in the 80s, I think it is. And uh, he also has a daughter now, Anya, who plays with Kerry Komogi. And they've got a, she's got a couple of all Ireland medals between Clon Morris and Kerry. And he's a great man to go to a game that he's not supposed to go to and uh, he's a great man to report on games as well. So that's Tommy O'Connor. On to John O'Dowd. Uh, John uh, is from Tarbert, uh, not a hurling stronghold, I know, but at the same time, a man who has a pink shirt and has been yesterday footing turf <laughs> has to be of interest to us. He's a freelance journalist. He worked 
with the he works mainly with the Kerry men, the Examiner, the Star. He was on the desk in the Star and worked with them in Dublin uh, for many years until he returned home to look after his dad, who unfortunately passed early this year. Um, and John has been uh, reporting on hurling for a good number of years, and he was at the recent uh, County Hurling League final between Kilmoyley and Crata and he was shouting for Kilmoyley all through that game, although Crotter won it, one of my clubs. And <laughs> on to the youngest member of our panel, that is Aidan Leahy. Now, Aidan has a checkered career. He's wearing red because he's a Man United supporter. He doesn't like their manager, yet he tweeted uh, when he was reappointed today that this was a great move. Uh, so don't believe everything that Aidan tells you. Uh, he's played various grades of hurling with... Uh, and <coughs> Dorney, who are uh, the only team who won the championship of the 10, well, there is one, Croke haven't won it, but they haven't won it since 1974. Um, again, that's my home club, one of them, and uh, <laughs> you couldn't call me a glory hunter if I'm following Abby Dorney. Now, the one thing <laughs> about, the one thing about <coughs> Aidan is that he is um, a manager as well and a coach, and uh, he coached a minor team uh, who met Crat, I think, in the final and lost it and he refused to talk to the press after. But uh, <laughs> since then, he has grown up and matured, and he now is a very knowledgeable <laughs> man, and he will be doing a lot of commentaries over the Hurling Championship uh, uh, in this coming uh, few weeks uh, with uh, Clubber. So let's hope that I'm still alive to be with him uh, after this broadcast is over. And finally... It was not under 21, final, by the way. It was minor, was it? 21. 21, okay, under 21, which is worse because... Uh, that was a very good team. Now, <laughs> moving uh, to the last man in our panel, and that's the great James McCarthy. Uh, James, uh, according to Anthony Daly, when I inquired about him, was a savage hurler. He said, you can leave out the hurler if you want. <laughs> um, he has eight championship medals. He captained Kilmoyley, so he knows what he's talking about. Well, and his teammates didn't, mind you, but he did. He knows what he's talking about in 2001. They did four in a row then. He was around with Anthony Daly when they did the two in a row, I'd say, two, two seven, two, eight, was it? Eight and two, eight and nine, yeah. And then he came back then uh, in 15 and 16, was it? Yeah. And uh, he has a medal there, two medals there. One of them was under John Myler, the other was Fergie O'Loughlin, I think. That's right. Uh, he attempted to come back in the noughties, but he, he was refused. <laughs> now, the amazing thing about James is that James, uh, in the event of 25 of the Kilmiley lads getting sick, would try and play county championship this year because he's playing with their junior team at the tender age of 49, would you believe? Uh, and no goal has been scored against him. He played at centre-back uh, <laughs> against a load of young fellas, and the reason is uh, apparently based on the fear principle. <laughs> So there Ru are... R rumours are that John Myler has deleted his number because of the frequency of phone calls in recent weeks. Absolutely, pick I would me, say pick that. Me, pick me. <laughs> I would say that, yeah, that's probably right. So now uh, it's time to get down to the analysis. Um, as I said, first of all, we just have a very brief um, run around the panel on the format. Now, I know the format has been criticised. It's changed. It's a one-year experiment. Uh, a lot of people would maintain maybe it should be two fives, but at least with this, uh, the teams are going to get four games each. Um, there isn't maybe that much jeopardy in it, but you know, to allow players to get back from injury, to get their form, etc., there may be some merit in it. And at the moment, it is what it is, and players now and clubs will have to uh, embrace it. Tommy, uh, could it be tweaked further? What would your ideas be? Certainly, it's a, it's a very unusual format. Uh, the one thing I would say about it, it gives teams an opportunity to play championship hurling with full teams. Up to now, all the league games have been played without the county players, which is a drawback, really, and so you know, clubs are getting things together. Um, probably can be tweaked in years to come. Uh, it really doesn't get serious until maybe the quarterfinal stage. But at the same time, it gives opportunities to build to especially the teams that are trying to get up the ladder um, probably the one downside is that the championship is over so early it's over on the august weekend so if a team is knocked out in early july uh, early mid july that's probably it for the season but uh, at the same time reasonably positive in the amount of games people are getting championship games i think which uh, uh, ups the, the ante in terms of competitive games 
Yeah, John, what would you think about the, the, the format? Obviously, uh, we always had, because we have the extra team in Tralee Parnells, we had to do something. Uh, it was always three uh, groups of three, and they were easy enough to handle, and then you would see the teams going into straight to semi-final, and then you had two quarterfinals. I never understood two quarterfinals, because to me, uh, a quarterfinal is, means four, so we should have four quarterfinals. But I think it was James McCarthy that messed that up. <laughs> uh, but what do you think of the, the format? I suppose it's, it is the issue of the, getting the tent team this season in Tralee Parnells they had to do something they knew there was an extra team and I suppose as Tommy has uh, hinted at there it is good for the teams that are trying to make progress like the Tralee Parnells as the Dr Crokes and even Bally Haig who have an awful lot of young players at the moment and they're trying to bring themselves back to where they were when they were winning county championships the last one obviously was in 2000 but th those teams now are guaranteed a minimum of three games Mm -hmm. So that's um that's excellent for like if you're over Tralee Parnells or you're over Dr. Crokes, at least you know that, that the three matches gives you a chance to work with your squad. You've obviously been working with them full time since the end of the inter-county season when Kerry bowed out of the Joe McDonough Cup. And now you know that you're guaranteed with three weeks of group stages, then you have another week for the preliminary quarterfinals. So they're guaranteed a month together over the next month and that can only um, make progress for the teams that really need to make progress and move up through the ranks um you can definitely tweak it maybe so there, there are people who, we, who we've even spoken to in the build up to the championship who might have been uh, more inclined to go for two groups of five everybody gets four games and you could either decide then that the top two in each group go straight to the semis or second and third go to quarterfinals and uh, the group winners go to the semis you obviously have the risk there of um dead rubbers most certainly in the last round maybe the second last round so like i think like all things like the way county board have been trying to work with the football championship uh the way that the ga in general have been trying to work with the various different championships um you're never going to get probably a format that suits everybody that's just life and that, i i think we just have to give this um give this a chance now over the next three weeks or a month before we get into the real nitty-gritty of it and see what uh, see what the spectator feedback is see what the competitive competitiveness of the matches are like before we give uh, full judgment yeah i i'd agree with with a lot of that actually aiden i mean you're sort of a young gun uh, and uh, your views would probably be a little more extreme uh, than uh, maybe those of us who have been around a bit longer but at the same time um would you agree that look it is what it is now. The teams are going to embrace it. And as far as you're concerned, Abby Dorney, if you want to be get to the to the you know, the real semi finals of the championship and, and trying to win it, the more games he played the better. I suppose, like to be fair, what John has said, like really he's right. Um I think the GA in general, this is the way it, all competitions are going. It's more games, more games. The only thing is that more meaningless games in a way but not you know what i mean like it, it you just kind of cut your, your cloth accordingly i suppose to, to, to the teams you have in every competition i think the biggest thing the look i think the thing is with this is that it's one group with a different amount of teams the other two groups and that's probably yeah. what everyone is annoyed about or at least it just doesn't look right i suppose yeah. um now it could turn into a great championship like you know we were calling group a a group of deaths but you can't really call it a group of deaths if nobody gets knocked out at the end of the day um, and you will have an element of teams holding back in those games I would say um, because at the end of the day it, it doesn't really you know in terms of where they're going to finish after the group games mm -hmm. like whether you win or lose it's going to be all about getting in minutes into guys who are back into the team from county panels etc and, and, and getting some sort of a rhythm going I suppose in the championship it's not perfect i think the two groups of five is probably where we should be heading eventually yeah so we're, if this is a stepping stone to that great and if we can get some sort of a proper system going between intermediate and senior with the likes of croaks panels and kilgarvin like because ideally you'd want kilgarvin as well to be striving to come up to senior because realistically they should have had they should have played senior at some stage over the last five or six years yeah with the success they had at intermediate so we could have probably had 10 teams a good few years ago yeah. it's good that we have 10 teams now it's great to see three panels there it's probably actually as my own father was saying it's probably ahead of schedule actually as to where when they set up three panels 
getting into senior championship. I think they're actually ahead of schedule getting into senior championship. Um, so it's good to see it. I think if this is a stepping stone to two groups of five and having a real sort of cutthroat championship um, down the line, then uh, yeah, look, we, we'll see how this goes. And um, hopefully Parnells and Croaks can cement themselves in senior, senior hurling and hopefully the likes of Kilgarvan can strive to, to get up to senior by winning the Intermediate Championship. Yeah, uh, James, uh, I suppose two things. Uh, um, Aidan mentioned Parnells and Croaks. Isn't it great to have two teams at senior level from the two biggest towns? Uh, obviously, Tralee is the county town. Killarney is the, the tourist attraction. Um, <laughs> and and then we have, uh, and then I apologise to Killarney viewers, actually. Uh, and then we also have what uh, Aidan was talking about, maybe players coming back the games will do them good plus if lads are going to you know get a, a jersey that you know may have been on the bench they'll be trying to stake a claim that when the serious stuff happens in the knockout stage at the quarterfinals that they're in with a shout of reclaiming a jersey off one of the the more established stars let's say it's it's, it's a fact really and you kind of you could talk about the games the meaningless or whatever they're not i don't think they are because there's never a switch you can turn on so what we just walk through our group here we will lose the three games that we have to you don't automatically flick that switch and say, we're going to win now in the quarterfinal. You start off a trend of losing, you're going to end up losing. I mean, it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't work like that. Coming from my son Tommy, you'll know this, back when we played championship, early 90s, straight knockout. That's tough. We yeah. were to play, and, this, and you know yourself the way championship was that time, you were waiting maybe until mid-July or August to play your first game. It, was, it wasn't over September or October, but I'm from Kilmiley and I was there in the bad years. We were gone early. We were gone very early. Yeah. There was a lot of years there. Yeah. I played one game. We could have trained for six months, and we were gone. They were lean years. Tommy will tell you lean years as well. They were they were a good team that time. After St. Brendan's were a very good team that time. We were hit and miss. We could be very good, and then we lose by a point. We we never lost by much any year. But yeah. one game, you could be just one game. So yes, there is a lot to be said for giving teams games, meaningful games. Yes, but as I say, it's still Kilmiley will go. We want to win every game. We yeah. call, people call us arrogant, Grant. I call us arrogant. That's fine. I don't care. Yeah. We want to win every game. We want to go through the front door in every game we ever played. Yeah. And that whatever we ask got to be, we're going to go through the front door. Yeah. We're not going to just throw games. We're not going to say, we'll pull back four or five fellas tonight. We're going to put our full team every week. And I think a lot of teams will go like that if they're honest. If they're honest about it. Yeah. Keep up the integrity of the competition. Yeah. And that's the way to go at it. Tell me, uh, yeah. I think maybe we need to look at intermediate as well. You know, maybe the strengths of teams going up when we potentially 11 teams, if you talk about Kilgarvan. Bring in Kilmere, Tommy, maybe make 12. Yeah. You nearly get 12, would you yeah. get 12? But uh, I think yeah. maybe to strengthen up maybe the ability of teams that uh, a team may have to win the intermediate hurling championship two years in a row, and then you're building, yes. and then you're up, and maybe to be guaranteed seeing a competition for a couple of years beyond that, you know. So uh, certainly you can widen the base. Uh, by walking out and by thinking of different tweaks. Certainly this year, look, it's a start and uh, it's a far cry from yeah. the knockout. You train for three months for one game and gone. It can be demoralising. Oh, that was, so <laughs> that was demoralising. <laughs> yeah, so the bottom player now would be some great options, you know, yes. and great opportunities to, to better themselves throughout the season. Yeah. But so you do admit, uh, both James and uh, Tommy, you do admit that when you were playing, you were failures at times. <laughs> <laughs> no problem admitting that. <laughs> I always turn the trunks at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we came good. We came good. <laughs> you should get player feedback at the end of it, though. If they don't yeah. get the players' feedback at the end of this yeah. championship, then realistically, how can they say they've they've tried to see if it works or not? If yeah. the players come back and they say, "Look, it was uh, the season was whatever, somewhere yeah. reasonable, enjoyable, but the championship was enjoyable," I think they do have to send some sort of player survey out though at the end of this year. Very because good, at the end yeah. of the day, if they're if the players are not enjoying this and if yeah. they're literally looking at the calendar and yeah. they're, they're not happy with it yeah then we're we're going down yeah. the bad road because we're not going to end up thinking that yeah. yeah yeah well yeah you have the revolutionary uh thoughts there of eden and uh then we had james john and of course tommy as well now we get started into the action and we go through the groups and the first group we're going to we're going to start in reverse actually we're going to go to group three and that involves Kilmiley, Ballyhigh and Dr. Croaks. So what we'll do is we get uh, three teams, we get three in the panel to talk individually about the teams and then we'll get the fourth individual to summarise what he thinks is going to happen in the group 
and everybody can have their top and sword then. So I'll start with Kilmiley since they have 26 titles won. They won their last one ages ago, 2021. Um, <laughs> and uh, I don't know, was James involved? He, no, well, he wasn't involved no, in that. He was retired with a couple of years. Mind. Yeah. Uh, last year, they were beaten semi finals, of course. That was a great game against Crotter. There was one that uh, went to Cheno. <laughs> there was a goal <laughs> got at the end. And yeah. A pie. yeah, that was an incredible game. We were, yeah, I think, I think, that that's, one thing, I yeah. think that's one thing, Mark, that people are kind of forgetting when analysing and everything that took place last year. Obviously, it was a Crotter League Snap final and it was brilliant for Crotter to win the title for the first time in 55 years. But Kilmoyley were, were within seconds of uh, beating Crotta in that semi-final and getting into the... into The, the Tom O'Connor catch. Yeah, into the final. And it could have been a totally different story. We could have been talking again about the genius of John Myler and the resilience of Kilmoyley and the way that they always find a way to do it when they need to do it. Now, obviously, this year, uh, Myler and Morris Mernan are still at the helm. And everyone knows John Myler. He wouldn't be there if he didn't think that the capability was there within the club to win the Nealus Flynn Cup because that's just the type of fella he is. He does love the club, but he's a winner and he's staying around because he feels that there's more silverware to be won. We both saw them there two weeks ago in the County League final and I suppose the biggest thing we could take from that uh, Thursday evening in Ballyduff was the loss of Morris O'Connor. Um, yeah. Kilmoyley just didn't have the same attacking threat uh, without him on the night he's going to be missing for the group stages with the hamstring injury that he picked up on uh, Kerry duty in the Joe McDonough Cup but as James was saying to us uh, off air earlier they're hopeful of having him back from the quarterfinals onwards and that's going to be absolutely massive um, Daniel Collins didn't look to be at full pelt uh, that evening Daniel mm. will make sure that he is when it comes to the yeah. nitty gritty um, it was an awkward evening for taking freeze wasn't it yeah he it was the, few, the, 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 the wind, wind yeah. the wind that evening made a kind of, Conditions really difficult for both teams. Um, Rob Monaghan, again, we have to say with his move to the Carlton Blues in Australia, people might forget that he was a big loss to the Kerry under-20s and a lost hard fair to footballers. But he was also a huge loss to Kilmoyley. Yeah. Because if anyone remembers the semi-final, I think it was from the year before in 2022, I think it was another cracker. James has probably gone mad again. I think they were just pipped by Causeway in that match. Um, Extra time. Rob Monaghan scored five points from play. In that game, yeah. maybe one five actually. I think he might have got a goal as well that day. He was absolutely, yeah. one, he was absolutely, yeah, he was absolutely yeah. magnificent. And then you you talk about Barry Dan O'Sullivan as well, who's obviously in with uh, Kerry Senior Football Panel at the moment. He scored three points from play in that 20, 22 clash with Causeway. Mm. So they're huge losses uh, for even a club uh, as storied as Kilmoyley. What we did see again in the County League final, there are some young fellas coming through, the likes of Bobby O'Connor. Uh, Dara Corridan looked uh, pretty good now as a wing back. Uh, that day, they were missing the James Godleys and the Coleman Savages and yeah. Tom Bernans as well that night. Jordan Brick is captain. Uh, Darren Nolan on the 40 looked really good. Uh, you still have the, the likes of Paddy O'Connor and Rona Walsh. They still have lots of good players. John B between the posts. So, as yeah. usual, Dougie. Th yeah. yeah, they mightn't be tipped at the moment, maybe, to, to go and win it, but they'll definitely be there or thereabouts. Yeah, and they were good coach as well, and Sean Mansell, he's excellent. He was with the Kerry under 20s. He's a great guy and a great servant of Kilmiley as well. He would have been a better player than James. <laughs> uh, and then you have John Edmund Horgan, uh, you have Patrick Flaherty, and we can't forget Miles Fitzgerald, one of the all-time greats. He's involved as well with the management team. Um, so Kilmiley, well in there. So I think that they will have a say before the competition is out. Uh, Bally Haig, uh, they last won it in 2000. They have five titles and they didn't reach the knockout stages last year, uh, James. Um, obviously, Colin Walsh, you know, Dara Khan, he was in with Kerry, Philem O'Sullivan, and of course, Michael Lean. Whose father is now a, a counsellor, <laughs> so he will be definitely he's on a high. The title. He's promised the title. He's promised <laughs> the title. Yeah, yeah, promised the yeah. Title. yeah. And uh, I think you were looking for a medical card off him. Uh, <laughs> and my, my pension. <laughs> no, no, it's the b b the bones you've broken allegedly. Uh, Mikey O'Halloran has retired. Um, uh, I heard that from them. But they ha Rory Duggan is in Australia. And uh, Dan Lock is not playing, so they've lost, but they have a young team, and Philip Lucid is still there, mm. etc. So 
give us a rundown and you have the boxer obviously in yeah. charge along with Brendan O'Sullivan etc I like the look of them in fairness you, you see this one more to anyone who's watched underage hurling in, in Kerry over the last couple of years they'll see what Ballyhag have done and you, just, you mentioned boxer and Ned Flag and all those lads yeah what they've done underage is they've brought a huge number through and I can see from Glendary schools even the coming of months ago and all that Glendary wanted that force at that age that might be it's coming it's, it's not just happened overnight this has been happening underage for the last number of years with Belly High. They've good young lads coming through. They made minor finals as well. It's stepping stones for them. But as you say, Michael Lean is the fulcrum. I think that they have to play Michael Lean in the back. Colin Welch midfield, yes. It's up front, I think they might lack the scores. They'll have Nathan Gale and they're very Walsh. Phelan could be maybe half back, maybe up front. You know yourself you need a Mackey forward. Yeah. I what about don't. the big lad that plays full forward? What's his name? Is he O'Connor or is he Walsh? You know, Eric Walsh. Eric, Eric Walsh. Walsh. Eric Walsh. Eric, Eric, yeah, yeah. Very good inside man, but I don't think they have a Mossy Connor. That's what you lack. Yeah. That's what you lack. Like, oh, Bally Hag always said that. Bally Hag mm. a boxer. They had a patch loose. They'd come in, get a few scores. Yes. They had a lot. They had a marquee forward. They'd bring the Sullivan midfield. They had powerhouses. Yeah. When, when I started off, they were a team. I spent my first night here in Championship running around the field after bringing Sullivan, not even seeing the ball. So that was yeah. really top class hurlers. Yeah. That's, that's the only thing they're lacking at the minute. Great energy, great spirit about them. I think... Brendan Sullivan's well tuned in as well. There's some nice hurlers there, very good hurlers. They'll be very strong at the back. I think defensively they'll be strong. I think up front they will lack a little bit. Yeah. Now I could be totally wrong, but that's just judging. Like, like they're in our group, obviously, yeah. with Croaks. The first game here on Saturday night is a great chance for them. Speaking on my own behalf, so I know we have a lot of injuries. We fell as way. We are we're, we're probably we're under pressure at the minute. Would you we say are. you're vulnerable this Saturday? Right? Vulnerable, exactly. That's the word, exactly. That's what yeah. I say. We are vulnerable. We say Belly High team coming with an energy after, as you've said, <laughs> Mike Lean's win. Yeah, <laughs> and he's, yeah. And he's, he's, he's promising the cup. So, like, if that man's starting off with his promises, look, yeah. they might follow. I hope he doesn't I, climb any ladders. <laughs> <laughs> like a rising tide lifts all boats, Martin. You know, so yeah. they did a good feeler on the parish. Belly High should come in confident. And they should have no fear of Kilmiley. Because Kilmiley are like, a, a bit, a, they're a bit down at the minute, but we will get going. Yeah, but uh, Belly High, I like uh, the look of them too, though. I don't. think going on as the competition goes on, they will surprise one or two. Yeah, they I was will. going to ask my producer there to play uh, if he'd a violin in the background there to play the fiddle. <laughs> you heard Kill Miley, like we've a load uh, of injuries, etc. You know, I still we've predict the win, titles. though. I still predict the win, yeah, for us. <laughs> I still predict the win for us. I mean, James, <laughs> now, Aiden, you Aiden, follow that. Follow that. <laughs> Follow that piece of, uh, of word juggling there, uh, and eventually he comes back to. He's reading out Miler's text. Miler, yeah, that's right. John Miler just texted him and told him what to say. Anyway, uh, what about Dr. Croaks? Now they're managed by Pat O'Connor, obviously, um, and they also have Timmy Horgan, who's to play with him. Alex Hart is in from Tipperary this year, supposed to be very good. Of course, the King himself, Bonner, Carmack Bonner. And Sean O'Shea, everybody knows Sean O'Shea. Did you play against her with Sean O'Shea? Sean, yeah. probably before my time. Tommy, you were playing my time. Good yeah, hurler, good operator, Sean. Yeah, he's Super a great operator. Yeah. 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 I cannot yeah. believe there was somebody before James McCarthy signed. <laughs> 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 On the same panel. <laughs> 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 same squad. It's great, it's great to see a man like Sean O'Shea still contributing yeah. to his club. It shows you the way Huge. crooks are. You know, you're part yeah. of the club and always are. You know, it's so yeah, putting it's, everything back into it. It's good. Aidan, give us a small bit on, on, on Crooks I know you've done a load of research on them I'd say Fins have probably conspired against them a small bit this year they've lost a good few players I know that their footballers are making a massive drive this year as well which yeah. is probably not really helping Patrick Shane's taking over so they're, that they means were, discipline and yeah, I would possibly say no hurling they're probably stronger over the last two years than they're going to be this year Yeah, because judging by what we've seen in the county league as well I know last year Eddie Orney went to Lewis Road and they lost the Crokes by a point and this year they had a fairly handy win against them yeah. like, you know, but so. they did fulfil a, they did play all their games in the County League which is a criticism didn't they yeah. they didn't win any but they played them all look yeah um, it, it will be difficult and look at it, it's it's probably a pity for them that they're at probably the weakest point they've been over the last couple of years and they're in a group now with Billy Hoig who are probably Stronger than they've been in, in the last three or four years, you know. Whereas, yeah, I say they would have been Crokes have been crying out to get a chance at, to have a crack at the likes of a Benny Haig. They had their crack at Eddie Dorney and put them under serious pressure here over the last couple of years as well. Um, it's probably a pity for them it's come this year when they are probably not at that level. And I find it difficult to see them pulling off an upset against uh, 
against Betty Hyde and I think against Kilmoyle as well. Like you know, uh, Kilmoyle will get a chance probably to test out the squad. I would say in, in that match as well, yeah. unfortunately. Um, but you're you're just hoping with Doctor Croaks that they just keep going, keep building. It's going to be a yeah. tough year, but you'll probably have those years for a club like Doctor Croaks where their yeah. footballers yeah. are going to be up and down as well and they have to capitalise on any yeah. any any time they, they hit a dip but Char- yeah the, in, sorry to interrupt you. Charlie Keating is a huge loss to them he's concentrating on the football and from what yeah. we hear the rumours are he may be going down under as well you know so look um, that's difficult the one thing when t- talking to Pat O'Connor what he did say was what he would like in the future and if they are to make any impact more in-house players more from the club they have a lot of outside lads their captain is james murphy who's the uh, brother of owen murphy the kilkenny senior hurling goalkeeper one of the best in the country so they have a, a number of players from outside four five six but they don't have the lads coming through now tom Doyle is a fine player obviously he played for Kerry this year came on in a number of games and was good in the championship last year but they don't have that like the kilmoyles and the lixnaz and the belly dust and the causeways etc have that young pool coming up that they're you know when they come get out of the cradle like they're given a slitter and a hurley when you come out of the cradle in croaks like you're given a basketball and a football like and that's it, it. Yeah. and 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 uh, probably uh, uh, um, a lifetime supply of uh, a coaching manual um on how to play we, football we see it i suppose when we play the intermediate teams of croaks like there never is the the young bunch like every club that plays intermediate has a young bunch in their yeah. intermediate team right. whereas Crokes never really do have that young oh, bunch and yeah. that's, that's you know they need their 17 18 year olds coming in and filling up the intermediate yeah. squads like yeah. every time yeah. they don't have the minors yeah they look whether exactly. the interest isn't there or whether they're just not able to entice them into the squad i don't know yeah they're probably not playing it anyway at that when they are you know yeah when they're minor yeah. they're not playing hurling they're not playing hurling you know, no. they might play a small bit every here yeah. So often, yeah. Like, no, that's um, that's a that's an excellent analysis, uh, Aiden. Fair play to you. Thank you. Uh, it surprised thank you. me. Anyway, uh, <laughs> on, to, <laughs> on to on to Tommy. <coughs> you heard the lads talked about the group. Obviously, uh, the expectation is that it will be the two teams that come out. It will be Kilmiley and uh, and Bally Haig, and uh, obviously then they will go. Uh, Crokes will go into the preliminary round. Uh, have you any any in less than a hundred words? Have anything uh, else that you might see happening? I cannot disagree with that much. There's a uh, Kimali to top, uh, Benny Haig second, and Crooks just don't have the strength in depth really. You know, Kimali have huge uh, underage talent coming through. I find every year they seem to add one or two to the panel and uh, superb holders, and uh, I can't see them losing top spot in that group. Benny Haig have. I suppose up and coming lads, but uh, as well as the established guys, uh, not there yet. So oh, I yeah. can't see Kilmiley to beat Benny Haig, Benny Haig to beat Crokes, and Kilmiley to beat Crokes. So one, two, and three, Kilmiley, Benny Haig, and Crokes. It's like the elections. Not sure. I mean, <laughs> and it, won't, it won't take three <laughs> days to count it either. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, uh, yeah, that's brilliantly summarised. I tell you this, you were fairly incisive in your punditry. Uh, that's a fair summation of that group. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Now, so that's one of the groups decided by us. We have, uh, that's only, by the way, uh, according to the, our experts here, things could be different when they start playing. Now we go to group two and we'll go through this maybe a small bit uh, quicker because we have four teams in uh, the first group. And we've got Lixna, I think, here. And uh, we've got, of course, uh, Tralee Parnells. And uh, we've got Abby Dorney. Now, this is the problem is here, I think... Um, I'm going to give Lixna to Tommy because um, I need to keep uh, Aiden away from Abby Dorney because he believes <laughs> <laughs> he believes they're going to win every game. And trust me. By the way, he was the manager of another 21 team a couple of years ago. Um, right. So, look, Lixna, their last one in 2018. They were in the final last year, as you know. Uh, but they're crippled with injuries. Shane Conway is not ready to resume yet from what we hear. It'll probably be the knockout stages which they should reach. Conor O'Keefe is back training all right, but he is limited. He probably will get limited game time early doors, is what's being said. But then when you look at who's gone, John Buckley is down in Australia. Um, I And uh, he's down there. Mickey Kelleher um, uh, is in uh, US. He's gone in a J1. 
John Griffin, I think, has retired. James, you'd know because he could you're be he'll be called back yet. That's it. That's, could, yeah. that's on board line. That's yeah, board line you're in that. You're in yeah. that bracket. Uh, Always in, waiting to call. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, know, you're yeah. on. You're on a couple of years, and he is away from the free travel. Um, <laughs> and then we have we have James Flaherty, whose body won't take any more, or it is cried enough. I think uh, that's for sure. And. Uh, were you you would have been marking him back in the day? No, were you the guy who the, he was uh, kind of forward? He was way too fast for me. Yeah, <laughs> we but you were point. inside waiting. <laughs> for him the... I never got back fast enough. No, no. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. And uh, Mike Conway, Mike could maybe play a part. We don't know, but uh, it's that thing. Darren Shannon, of course, is a fine player. He was their captain, I think, when they won it last in twenty eighteen. Was he not? Aidan Hansen said so. I'm right. Uh, and Darren Conway, of course, was James was talking about earlier. So be much changed I think they have a good young fella as well Owen Stack uh, who's in I saw him with the, one to carry under age teams the under 20s I think and he was very good um, what would you think of uh, Lixna's chances you obviously know the group they're in yeah. um, Lixna look in championship time they're always there uh, first of all maybe to pay tribute to the, the fantastic facilities they put in place out there Hermitage know, Park fantastic wall ball oh, and pitch yeah. etc you know so the people behind the club are certainly leaving no stone unturned uh, to put the best in place. They have Barry Hennessy, who was a former all Ireland medalist with Limerick, of yeah. recent vintage. You know, he's yeah, their coach, their second yeah. year. So he's put them through their paces. Um, they're strong in sectors. Uh, Dara, Dara Conway, uh, goalkeeper, Martin Snackpool, you know, they're kind of strong, but probably where they're lacking is the new lads to come in. They've showed great underage potential over the last eight or nine years, but it doesn't seem to, it doesn't seem to have come true. One thing I'd say about them is they have always a very strong, in the last couple of years, very strong intermediate panel. You know, yeah. They've won a lot of, uh, probably of the intermediate and Division 2 maybe competitions. You know, So uh, the talent is there and the, the panel is there. But uh, their ability maybe to go all the way is probably questionable at this stage. And uh, bearing in mind that there'll probably be some shadow boxing in the group stages, I certainly wouldn't ro rule Lixna out as the competition goes on. Players will be back from injury. Uh, Shane Conway potentially back from injury, Connor O'Keefe back, you know, so as the competition goes on, they will get stronger and certainly not to be ruled out. Yeah, I'd agree with you there entirely, yeah. they Obviously, they're going to miss Shane Conway big time, uh, but once he comes back and Dara Conway, and they're probably only waiting until young Ivan reaches the stage <laughs> and he's another elusive <laughs> character that if he was playing in James's time, uh, James, uh, he'd be gone down a rabbit hole before James could spot him. Um, so next, uh, John, do you want to have Abidorni? a look at Pandel? Uh, do you want to look at Abidorni? Yeah. I give panels to, to the Abidorni man. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, Abidorni as a team this year uh, cannot be lacking in motivation above any other season for two big reasons. Number one, the fact that Crotta ended their 55 year famine uh, last season has to give a team like Abby Dorney a uh, massive self-belief that if they get everything right and if everything clicks and they don't get injuries to their key players and if they can just play above themselves when it does come to the crunch knockout games that maybe the fairy tale could happen for them and uh, the fact that it's the 50th anniversary of their last championship victory in 1974 has to be even the bigger factor than the Crotta success last year. We've seen with Abby Dorney, uh, on their day, the potential is there for them to beat any of the other contenders. Yeah. We saw them in the County League final last year. They beat Ballyduff on that night. They've taken scalps in the senior championship at different stages over the last couple of years. Maybe the consistency has never been there on a full-time basis for them to put back-to-back -back big performances together. Obviously, a lot depends on the O'Leary's. Uh, Michael, he's free of inter-county activity over the last few seasons. He's probably still with his size and everything. He still gets the niggles and everything and the, the problems that, are, that have plagued him. But like he's capable on his day of winning a game for his team. Do you know, mm -hmm. he mightn't get the same uh, headlines as a Shane Conway or as someone else, but he's capable on his day. You factor in Brendan O'Leary. You factor in Jack Sheehan. You factor in Oshin Mansell is back from all his niggling problems and he's a fine hurler. Nilo Mahoney. There is potential there. Um, they Captain, have of course, James. Yeah, yeah James, James O'Connor, an excellent yeah. player, a stalwart. Uh, uh, never gives less than 110% every day he's out on the pitch. 
Get Francie O'Halloran in in from Clare. Aidan will be able to tell us what his influence has been up to now. I feel there's a there's a kick in Abby Dorney this year. Whether it takes them all the way, again, we'll come back to the consistency and luck with injuries and stuff like that. And maybe a couple of the big contenders not playing to their full potential. Yeah. But this should everything, Crota winning the 74 anniversary, it has to be a boost to them. Do you think they're dark horses? Almost definitely. Yeah. Very, very dark or light dark. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think they're I I think they're waiting in the long grass. The potential is there. It's up to them to deliver. There is no it. long grass in the Abidoni field. It's one of the best kept fields in the county. Aiden, uh, have anything to add to that as regards, you know, the, the makeup of the team and the ambition that they have? Are they training well? Are they going well? Any injuries that you could report late to us that they wouldn't have told us about? There is I'd say if there is fellas that are that are struggling with it, like like Sonal Matney got injured with Kerry at the start of the year, like he's still I suppose the extra week is is, is very helpful to him. Yeah. In in terms of Is that of a shoulder injury? Yeah, it yeah. was yeah. It was as bad as what was taught at the start, so he is in the frame of getting back there and it's like that keeping the lads that are fit fit. That's yeah. always that's always been the biggest challenge. Is yeah. keeping the guys ready to go. O'Sheen yeah. is um Probably, if Oshin Mansell could be fit and ready and hundred percent to go for a championship hurling yeah. side now, I think. He's yeah, I saw him playing for the guy against Mitchell's the, in an awful key, like, game, yeah. but uh, he was very good. He's, he's driving he's, from he's a centre back were crazy. Yeah, so can very, he make that good. big of an influence, Aiden? Yeah, he's probably going to be in the forwards, like, and he will. Like, he, there was a, a county league game outside in in Abilorni against um against Benny Hague and himself and Jack Sheen who played underage together for forever. Um, and yeah. they just the link up they had is is superb. Like and the likes of David Egan there as well is playing very well this year. He's starting to score points, which he never really did before. He's always been a, a good goal getter, but he's 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 fired over uh, a good few scores in every game yeah. he's played. So it's it's yeah. it's the likes of him as well. Like they all need to step up to the plate yeah. and contribute. We do massively rely on on Michael O'Leary whenever we go into town, like for for everything really free scores and play so that needs to change that, that's the biggest thing it's, it's yeah. if you can get all your forwards contributing yeah yeah, yeah. young keen sheehan as well is a fine yeah, player and he is and he's a good character reminds me of luke the new luke crowley but uh keen is uh he had a great season there coming on and off with uh, the winter hogan cup final he was in with uh mount hawk so you know he's plenty uh he adds a lot. He adds a pile, to be fair, because he adds, he's very versatile in terms of yeah. like, controlling cornerback. You know, yeah. he's going to do a job. He's a bit cooler as well than his brother, isn't he? I'm not sure about that. No. Okay, right. <laughs> um, uh, better glass over that. Uh, I, when I go down, I'll be dorney. I'll be ambushed some night. Um, anyway, uh, what about uh, the third team? And I suppose, the, in one way, uh, they add to the championship because three Parnells uh, are, are are coming in. Uh, they're intermediate champions. It's their first year in. Uh, you know, back in the day, it was on the rails. So wasn't there was involved in the in the uh, founding the, the team. They only played juvenile first, and then I think it's about four or five years. David Buttermer was saying that. Uh, or Stephen is it? Uh, Stephen Buttermer <laughs> was telling us that. Um, you know, th he he feels they're kind of a small bit ahead of schedule. You know, but like they did take their chance and fair play to him. Everyone wanted intermediate to take their chance. What do you think of uh, their chances? Can they beat Abby Dorney? Um, I well, I'm 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 gonna say realistically probably not this year. Uh, just with the likes of Darreen, Rory Sullivan, Luke Chester missing, like Darreen is a huge loss for this year. You know. Yeah. Um, but like that, fellas like him have to take their chance to go abroad as well. It's just a shame, I suppose. Um, but hopefully he'd be back next year and, and can add a pile to them. Um, Ty Brick is probably their 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 main man really. Like he's Ty's super hurler. He was centre back here for Abby Dorney, Trilly Parnell's amalgamation in a minor county final in 2017, marked Barry Mahoney, and I thought did a very, very good job on him that day. Um, that was a, that was probably a huge stepping stone for them as well. A lot of those guys are still involved in that team that were on that, that minor team that were joined up. Mm -hmm. um, but they're doing serious work. Like you can see, look, they've won they've won failures over the past couple of years. They're yeah. They're they're doing well in both hurling and camogie. Like they're they're really driving it on in town in fairness and it's fantastic we do have a Trilly team back in the championship. Um, it gives a bit more buzz around the town, which you know it's always, I suppose, ourselves coming in from from the North Kerry villages, like coming in to try to take over Tralee. So it's it's good. Hopefully, we'll see a few flags around the town as well for for Parnells and 
Um, they always do a great display down down Denny yeah. Street, so maybe yeah. they'll show up a, a Fernandes flag or two. Right. Um, but um, they, look, this year, this year I think is just going to be about getting the experience of it. Will they threaten to win? Look, you never know, because you never know what's going to happen outside there. Both Lixna and Abby Dorney are probably not starting off at the strongest base that they could. Yeah. So if there is ever going to be two teams that they, they might frighten inside here, then, then it could be Abby Dorney and, and Lixna. But yeah. um, look, hopefully they can just represent the jersey, get things going for themselves, cement themselves at senior level and, and kick on there next year. Yeah, very good, yeah. Uh, well, it makes a change for you to see coming in, taking over. Truly, there was yeah, a time when he used to take over Banna. Uh, James <laughs> would even remember that. I'm talking about uh, the nightclub now, not <laughs> yes. uh, Just in case somebody thinks that there was a hurling team out there. There was. Uh, there was. There was. There was. There was. I know. <laughs> Um, <laughs> they won it in 1940. You see, that's so why he's a historian who <laughs> writes books <laughs> and I write match reports for a living. I mean, like, what a difference. Like, now, James, it's up to you in less than 100 words, which is quite impossible for you, uh, but you can try and without using any language. Um, can we have a summary of that? We have Lixna, Abidonian panels. You would have uh, a bit of knowledge about panels as well. Mm. Um, and I say you would welcome them in this year and hope that they acquit themselves well. In fact, do you know, it's the way they played in the Intermediate Championship last year, the pace, they had great pace. Mm -hmm. They played a style of hurling, I won't call it a cock style of hurling, but it was very similar. I, the losses, though, the losses, Darreen, Chester, and Leeds. They're yeah. a big loss. I know they still have Morgan Madden. They have a couple of lads in. John Sherman's a new lad they've in. He was with me in the college. Yeah. And For Frawley. Leash, yeah. You guys, there's some good lads in there. Will it be enough? I don't think so. Their most important game this year, I think, well, it's a preliminary round against Crokes. I'm calling, I'm just calling it early now because yeah. Abidorni will win that group. Mix now will be second and Parnells will be third. Parnells, they now, hopefully, which will be a great round, great fixture, Parnells against Crokes. Both of them, and then that for both of them should be kind of a real target. Say, right, yeah. this is now this one, now, this is a w very winnable game for both of them. That's er, that's later on in the championship, I know, but that's what they should be targeting because I think the two earlier rounds they will be a bit out of their depth. They will, yeah. I hate, in fairness. To, I hate yeah. to, uh, I hate to kind of dampen your <laughs> ardor there, but uh, that may not happen because the bottom two teams in group one will be paired against the bottom team oh in no. group two and <laughs> three and that uh, will mean that you could have a belly uh, duff for a cause uh, where RSM and Brendan's playing them so I don't think that happen, so. I don't yes yeah, so your dream and your <laughs> fantasy that you had and that you lived in there for those 30 seconds <laughs> it I sounded have, good though it, it, it was it sounded lovely it was a lovely it was, it was romantic really it was romantic <laughs> it was it, it was it, it will have to be yours in tears yeah I it think will, so I presume I was in tears myself not really but, yeah, <laughs> I think but so. I don't do you know realistically that's three weapons yeah I don't like to say it but it's three weapons yeah. And it's going to be three weapons for Crokes. Yeah. Can you take that in the chin? Or not just skulk off and say, oh God, we're not able for it? Yeah. Or just can it drive you on? Yeah. It should be a driving factor. Well, it should be. Yeah. I'm not, that's no disrespect to Parallels and yeah. Crokes. Crokes, yeah. But I played against them recently in Intermediates. Did you? So, like. I thought I, you were a junior hurler. <laughs> <laughs> we don't play junior much. <laughs> we play right. Intermediates either. All but right. that's, so, like, I know the level they're at. Yeah. And I know where our senior level is. Yes. There's a huge step. Yeah. So if we're talking even about Kilgarvan and Kinmere coming into the senior championship, huge step. Yeah. Huge, huge, huge. How is the man with the uh, eight county championship senior medals allowed to play intermediate in Kerry? I've no intermediate medal. <laughs> <All right. laughs> no, <it's laughs> is it the fact that you get getting old? old? Old, old. Well, like, yeah. Or the fact that I'm probably one of the last 15 fellas in the club that's available to play for the team. <laughs> that could be it. That, we're yeah. very small. Yeah. Our pool is small, but yeah. quality, we go for quality. Stop. Don't we'll stop the violin quality. again. Come on, with play God. it out. So go for quality. Wouldn't you have wouldn't you played simply for <laughs> Kilmile, you wouldn't you? As, as an outfit for every few seconds. Parishioners, fellow parishioners. We're the same parish. <laughs> right, so are we all agreed that it looks very like uh, we're going to have, uh, in no particular order, uh, Abidoni coming out of uh, oh. that and... Uh, 
and uh, is it Blixner I said? Yeah. Yeah, actually. Blixner and Abby Dorney coming out. Right. Now, uh, I think Group 1 is very interesting. It was called the Group of Death and suddenly uh, uh, until everybody realised there was no funeral home and uh, there was no need for one. But there'll still be very interesting games in it. Now, Crat O'Neill's are the first team. They're the county champions. And um, who wants to take uh, Crater? Crater, uh, th obviously they have 10 titles. The last one was 2023, but the other one was a long time before that, 1968. And one of the lads who played in 1968, I don't want to give away my age now, but one of the lads who gave w played in 1968 uh, was a lad called Brendan Toomey, right? He's a good holiday, he played for Kerry. And um, he taught us Irish in school in Kilauglin. And it was my first year in school and secondary school. And I went uh, and he used to come in with a black eye on a Monday morning. And we'd be always sort of uh, whispering to ourselves, you know, he was out last night. He was fighting, all that sort of thing. And suddenly then we realised that he was playing hurling. And for, so, for, for where we were, hurling was, we, we, we just didn't know anything about it. And then when we read the Kerryman and see, and then when we saw, savage, uh, sorry, uh, lads, tough lads like you playing, we suddenly realised that his black eyes, that's what he was getting from uh, the hurling, the poor lad. Uh, blonde hair, that time he was. Brendan, a great character, a great hurler, and he did great work after in Kilogl in the school with, um, with uh, Frank Walsh and uh, delivered a North Ireland uh, title for uh, ISK in 1996, I think it was, would you believe? Yeah, I think, Mert, uh, just on Crotta, I think there were hugely encouraging signs from the County League uh, final against Kilmoyley there two weeks ago. Obviously, Barry Mahoney's gone to America for the summer and he's undoubtedly Australia, a huge, a huge loss. No, I think it's America. It's America. I think it's Close America enough. for Barry, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's he's abroad right. anyway. Close yeah. enough. But he, he, he will not be back at any stage of the championship. Uh, we know that for sure. So he's obviously a huge loss to them. But I saw no diminution in, in uh, motivation from them that night against uh, Kilmoyley. They seem doubly determined to build on what they achieved last year. Obviously, with Brendan Mahoney at the helm and Johnny Horgan, um, players wouldn't be allowed to uh, slacken off or be satisfied with just what they achieved last year. Um, obviously, self-belief and self-confidence is higher from winning the, the Nealis Flynn Cup last year. They have the bones of the same group of players, um, obviously without Barry. They have confidence gained. They're physically stronger. Uh, I think uh, Kilmoyley James will probably agree. In the last 10 or 15 minutes, Kilmoyley did improve and they made it probably a closer game in the finish than it actually was. Crotta kind of held them at arm's length for the majority of that game. They were the better team. Um, and I think on that night alone, we saw a player that could be a breakout individual in this championship was the wingback Sean McGrath. He was yeah. absolutely an exceptional performance. And if Kerry under whoever is the new manager next season are looking to build and bring in new players and uh, uh, change it up a bit, uh, Shawnee McGrath has to be a player that they're going to keep an eye on in this do, championship. Do you know why he played so well? I just interrupted for a minute. Uh, Sean O'Mahony, uh, Sean, uh, Sean McGrath, Sean McGrath, uh, Jazzy, they call him, right? His girlfriend is Jasmina, and she was right in front of us that night, right? And if you remember, he played in the second half down our wing, the left side as you were heading towards Bally Duff, uh, uh, that side of the goals. He was just showing off to his girlfriend. <laughs> so that's one of the reasons he played. I just wanted to get that plug in for him. I'm sure he'd be delighted. He's really one of the best on the 20s we had last year. James, Kerry, is in he? In fact, oh, Charlie McGrath, Charlie. top class. He top was top class. class. Attitude, hurling wise, he was one of our best lads last year. And it's, it was no surprise to see how good he's come on. No surprise at all. Yeah. And he should be really one of the fellas you're building a carry team around him for the next 10 years, if you want to. Really is top class. His attitude is that good. Really top class, I think. Yeah, add, in, add in Rory Mahoney and Tom. Yeah, the two, of them, two of them. Two of them. Yeah, they were brilliant. Really yeah. Brilliant. Holder, you know, and a great attitude, just a positive attitude. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and determined. Uh, determined. Yeah, John's, uh, uh, John yeah, you look, through, you look yeah. through the whole team there. The McKenna's at midfield. Uh, Beans, Bill Keane, Killian Trent, Tomas O'Connor, there with Sean McGrath at the back. Jordan Conway, the old warrior, Shane Nolan. Shawnee McGilligan's a dangerous player, can especially get goals when he's on his game. Darrow Dunhu, 
they have all the raw materials again to be a huge force even in this group which is which is a tough group they will go a long way and again. And Sheehan lad is back after a while, the number 10. Was he John or James Sheehan? James but Sheehan, yeah. James Sheehan, yeah. They, they definitely will go a long way again, even without uh, Barry Mahoney. Um, Adam O'Sullivan, uh, a good choice as as captain, a fine, one of the most uh, up-and-coming goalkeepers, improved goalkeepers um, in the county. They're definitely go- yeah. well And their killed. manager, of course. Yeah, and their manager. We all He's know a legend. their manager. Yeah. Uh, James is probably probably able to tell us more stories oh, of coming out yeah, against him on the pitch. Well, I mean, any story about we Brendan? Won, we won a uh, National League final in 2000, in 2000 actually together, and we yeah. never got uh, promoted to Division 1 that year because we, we structured the whole thing. No, he's a super player. No, did you? He's he like he, myself. Oh, we were very similar. Abrasive. We call ourselves abrasive. abrasive. We were very abrasive, rugged, two of us, and I'd have no problem. We, I often meet him. We play guard about Hurland, like, and. Yeah. Great operator. No cards, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy chips in with no cards, just to remind us how yeah, abrasive no that's true, that's true. Uh, James no and Take the Did lead. you ever, wh- where did he play? Did you, did you ever mark in club games? No, we, we kind of, like, like you invited in, we each pa- other. We kind of did invite each other, thank God, because we were, <laughs> they were that'd be kind of uh, the immovable object, the irresistible force kind of thing. Yes. Like, and you got to wonder. But yeah. no, yeah, I'm, I remember one game that from, Back in 2000 in the National League, he was an excellent final from Core Park. The old Core Park, when yes. he won it, he was excellent. Full forward, there was himself and John Mike. And I think in the other corner was, it could have been Liam Boyle. And we had, we had a great team that time, super right. team. Could have made it to Division 1, but they restructured the whole league. Yeah. And we fell apart the, second, the following year. I know, yeah. It was just a pity. Did Michael Halloran take over, no? Uh, Bernie O'Connor. Bernie O'Connor took over. Yeah, okay. But just, to, just even just to conclude on Crotta there, Mort, even though they're up against um, Ballyduff Causeway and St. Brendan's, I'd have them top two guarantees. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What about uh, St. Brendan's? I know, uh, but uh, Tommy, we've got to talk about them and you're the best man to talk about them because you're deeply uh, immersed in everything St. Brendan's. Um, you didn't know St. Brendan, no? I think he's still around. He's still behind us. He didn't play hurling. He didn't play hurling. Yeah, I suppose we're building really, we have two minor championships. You're building now, and rest. I don't mean to be sharp with you, but you're building now since 2013, yeah. last time he won it. Well, I suppose the 2013 team probably should have won more. You yeah, know, they, they should. really had the ability yeah. to do so, but didn't push on. But I suppose these fellows are dual players and had a long number of years behind them. So that team really has gone at this stage. So you really have to go from scratch. The two minor championships in recent years, probably a bit early to bring those lads in, but some are making the step up this year. Uh, you have a core. Uh, I suppose group people like Dahi Griffin, Eric Lean, uh, they're the two main men at this stage. Finan Mackesy, of course, will be a huge loss to us. Huge yeah, loss. And yeah. And Kenny. He's gone to the Cats. Yeah, he is, so it'll be a big, big loss to us. But uh, quietly confident, a uh, lot of work done. Jerry Wallace, uh, Kieran Fitzgerald, and David Fitzgerald, the backroom team, you know, and they've put a lot of work in over the last number of weeks, uh, intense work. And uh, they'll be there, thereabouts. I think the fact they're in the so called group of death. Uh, it's probably a positive thing. They're guaranteed to get three tough games and you build the panel that way and you get to know the character of the players that you have, you know, so uh, they'll be there or thereabouts. Do you think, Tommy, that the team are closer to replacing the scoring influence of Keane Hussey? Uh, well, because Keane is a, is a big loss. Uh, you probably don't have, again, we spoke about marquee forwards, uh, probably don't have them at this stage. Uh, Mark you forward with experience. You have yeah, good John Egan and right, back know. in the day, so yeah, what a player. Yeah. Now you have his son, Finan, who is an excellent player. He's yeah. really kind of a difficult man to mark and he's been your top scorer all year, you know. So again he needs to step up to championship level this year and I'm sure he will, you know. So uh, I would say quietly confident. Very good. Now we're gonna have to move to I suppose the Duffers. Beat the semi finalists last year. Uh the last one it in twenty seventeen but they have uh, 25 titles. They're one behind Kilmiley, uh, James. And if they were to win it this year and you weren't, <laughs> Back on uh, you would really be so upset. It would you'd be probably, no surprise, Bert. But you probably would take up hurling again. <laughs> <laughs> no, do you know what? It's, we have a great rivalry with Bellof. Brilliant rivalry. Yeah. Top class club in Ferriston. I, we, we would kill them on the field, but I have to admire them. I have yeah. to admire them and the way they go about their business. They will be there about and yeah. Pod's not being with Kerry this year and Mikey might have them more. Yeah. Maybe because especially Mikey, Mikey, there's there's mileage on the clock, you cannot keep going. Yeah. They're still are the main men in their team. I know yeah. Pod Costler, I know how way Pod's fitness is, 
But you see, there's a lot of other lads on the team as well. They've Kyle O'Connor, like Kyle O'Connor, great, yeah. great player. It's been yeah. positioning. They just have to. I think they have to get that positioning right with their players. Yes. Sometimes they're wasting players. Yeah. Like Kyle could end up anywhere. Like yeah. up front, they, like Kevin, Kevin Goulding up back. front, like yeah. Dylan Moriarty. On yeah. their day, they're match winners. They yeah. are. We talk about Mackey forwards. They could be Mackey forwards. Yeah. But it's just what will Ballyduff get out of them? They're not getting the max out of these fellas. And I don't know why. Don't yeah. know why. They're just maybe it's back down to the fellas themselves because they've been. They've been given every chance. Yeah. Last year as well. You see Kevin Goulding every time he played last year, he was a threat. He mm. was a serious threat. Even when against Lixna, he was a threat all the time. Yeah. They won't be far off. Physically yeah. strong. Physically yeah. strong. And they will be fit. Barry's there with him this year, Barry Grady. Yeah. They'll they be did. very, And they very reached fit. Uh, the semi-final of the league, I think. They did. And you know, even in that, they were, I know it was quite a beat them because we, yes, I think we beat Evidorn in That's side. right, yeah. So it's not the rugby not saying them, but, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> but it's it was just that close to getting to a final again like and if they got yeah. to a final i yeah. wouldn't be surprised to see them win it yeah this group i think do they need games bad enough i don't think need games like that yeah other teams do like st brendan's they will build bad enough can come in cold and destroy you yeah they're that type of team they yeah. just have there is hurlers there yeah. very very tradition is big very as dangerous team. yeah very Isn't dangerous it? you don't it's have 25 huge. titles no the determination they have no it's there it, and as everyone's got to know on this table you have to know how to win yeah Crotter did not know how to win until last year yeah now they know how to win yeah now they know how to win championships you don't suddenly find that magic ingredient you get lucky if you do mm -hmm. and it's like us when we won four in a row we just got it, got a taste for it, wanted to hang on to it, wouldn't let it go. Maybe Crot had that this year, but I see bad enough. If they get back up there again, yeah. they're very dangerous coming up through underage. They have yeah. a serious conveyor belt of talent. Yeah. Keeping them is their problem. Keeping yeah. this. They won a couple of minors there before. Uh, That's right. Uh, yeah. After yeah. when uh, St. Brendan's won the last good, two. Like. Uh, so there's a lot of young talent in, in the club, as you say. It, it all depends on who they can have fit on the day. And I suppose as we were at it, one of their main men back through the day, and he's still training with them, or he was up to recently, is Liam Boyle. And you know Liam well, and Liam had a bit of a health issue recently, which happened while he was training. But now all is well. He's back working, I'm told. And he, he says he soon will be back training again. And uh, the Jap, as we affectionately know of him, a great guy. And he'd probably be in his early 40s, wouldn't he? He's uh, 43, 44, I'd say. Most yeah, yeah, say. yeah, yeah. But he still gives a lot to the club. So and maybe keep an eye out for his son, Evan, who will be on board yeah. with the Good Bally Hurlers yeah. this year. Oh, yeah, he so. could make a, a big uh, impression. And Mikey has a son playing as well, of course. Uh, Killian, Killian, Killian right, yeah, yeah, he played with the under 20. They're going to be very dangerous, Bally They're going to be very, very dangerous. They're indeed. Are they your dark horses? Oh, I wouldn't even call them that card. That's, 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 that's an insult. They're one of the favourites. 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 Again, uh, have you got more music there, producer? <laughs> because here he is. That's one thing you'll find. Where are we now? I think we're down fifth now. We're down fifth. We're way down there. Kilmiley men have this amazing, when you talk to them, right, what they'll tell you is, well, we're not great this year with injuries, etc. <laughs> and, and they'll talk up Bally Duff. And then what happens when you do talk them down, when they go on and win it, they'll say, he didn't think we had a chance. He gave us no chance. <laughs> After they're telling you, write us and give talk it, about give us. It, give it another five minutes and James will have Kilmiley down with Tralee Parnells and Dr. In Fox. a preliminary round. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Right, because it's six yeah. months. I'd say, no, we're going to win it. Yeah, we're going to Right. From now, the, the, back final, the, field. the final team is down to Aidan because I know how Aidan likes Causeway so much. Um, <laughs> so they have nine titles won. Uh, the first is 20, uh, the last one was uh, uh, just a couple of years ago, uh, 22, yeah, 22. Uh, uh, Stephen Goggin is in charge of him. This is his sixth year, and he's in been three county finals, and he's won two of them so far, Jews. Now, they're missing a, a good number. I mean, Jason Diggins is some last huge, of them in fairness. Huge. Uh, he's huge. You replaced with Mort. And, and yeah, and, and really, and that's well, huge. Like, to, to, I think to lose one of them, to lose Jason on his own is huge, to lose the two of them at the same time. Your spine like, is ripped out your team. Morris Delaney, it's, 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 it's crazy. Yeah. But still, you have uh, Steve Murphy's back. John Mike Dooley, who's a year younger than uh, James McCarthy. He's a year older. He's a year older. He's a year older He's than older. James. <laughs> <Can't keep his laughs> yeah. He won't appreciate that now. He's yeah. probably in his 50th year this year. Yeah, it, it is. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you it. talked about a 40th anniversary for Abby Dorn. This guy is going to celebrate his 50th, probably with the <laughs> yeah. cup. Um, yeah, he could. And, uh, and Gavin with him. Yeah, Gavin, his son. Yeah, And then the thing is, I presume, 
uh, that you'll want to come back then with the scene of scene to equal <laughs> no, no, him yeah. when you're 51. <laughs> they uh, have the Mackey forwards, Mort. We talk about Mackey forwards, they have him. They have him. They have him. Yeah. They have him if they need him. Aiden. It's, it's the biggest, probably, I suppose, the biggest positive going into the championship is that you would like of Dan Goggin is going to be fit to play in it. Yeah. And he's going to be able to show He's flying at the moment. The yeah. impact he made coming on for Kerry, the, the game out here against Down. He yeah. came on the first half, he got on the ball and unbelievable score from the corner there. Yeah. Lifted the crowd, like. And um, it's great to have him back fit. And um, like, look, I, su- I suppose as cause they will have to do, they'll have to look past the injuries of, of Jason and Marsh. Like, they're yeah. going to have to deal with it, find a replacement. I have no idea how they find that replacement. I don't know who they're going to play yeah. for back and centre back. Yeah. Um, I actually really don't. I don't know if, if they ever had a replacement for them. Anthony probably wins it today. Anthony probably wins it today. Probably maybe. Um, or even Anthony Feeney. No. Yeah. Or Evan Murphy could play the fullback role. Evan Murphy would play the fullback role. He could. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's, yeah. he's yeah. been good for Kerry. Yeah. Like yeah. 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 And Joe Diggins will right. come into midfield probably. Or number yeah. 10. He was being, he, and Brandon and Brandon as well. And you Brandon. She's still got a serious team. They do. Look, the penalties out here like against Cratter last year. Colm Harty's still a very dangerous He is, of course. He is. He's got pace, which James hasn't. We reckon that last year if if Causa had managed to get through that that uh, penalty shootout, they yeah. possibly could have given a walk over in the semi final with the amount of injuries they picked up in that game. Yeah. Uh, they were really were they were they were treadbare like towards the end of that. Yeah. Um look it's it's an influence again from this year. I think the man at the helm though, um on the boat knowing how to win, like Stephen knows how to win inside win. here. He does. And uh, I'm sure his name is definitely being considered in, yeah. this, in this building yeah. uh, for another definitely, job. Definitely, uh, yeah, actually. for a lot of time. Um, yeah. Well, at least there's You're not working for him, are you? No. The campaign is going well. I use PR agent. Get him out of cause. 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 There's always a reason. There's always a reason. But yeah, look, they will be. They will be dangerous. I think the amount of games they get in this is actually going to benefit them as well if they do have young guys coming in or inexperienced players maybe coming in to, to replace the lads. Like, the more games, the better they get. And playing against Billy Duff and, and our fort, like, is going to bring them on huge as well. So, yeah. um, they're 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 a danger, even without the two boys. Now, it might yeah. be the difference between them winning and losing a championship at the end of the day is, is the two lads they're missing, but they're definitely going to be there towards yeah. the latter stage. They're one of the leading because contenders. They dig in, like, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. You forwards yeah. like Ga- Gavin and Dan, even though Gavin might come back to the field maybe now. With, yeah. with the lads that are missing, like you never know, but um, yeah. they're, they'll still a danger. Paul McGrath will probably come back in again. I think they'll agree. He's, he's reported they to be good, injured and won't well. play, but <laughs> I'm certain he'll play the first game. Uh, he normally makes that, that, that kind of a, an impact. A very interesting group, lads. So let's quickly go around and say who we think, because it is probably one of the, the groups that we'll say who's going to come out. We obviously know the other two teams are going to go to the uh, preliminary round. So the two teams who will go straight to the quarters, Tommy, I hate putting you on the spot with your own Sam Brennan's involved, but go well, on. I suppose Sam Brennan's will probably use it to build, really. So realistically, you're looking at uh, Crotter O'Neill's, Valley Duff, Sam Brennan's and Causa. That's the way I call it. Uh, Causa probably will need time to adapt, really, to the injuries. And again, we'll use the, the early rounds to, to build. So you're team. saying Crotter, so, and Valley Duff to go to straight to the quarters, straight is it? At this point. Yeah, yes. what would you think, John? Yeah, I totally agree with that. I think Crotter will top the group and I think Valley Duff will come second. Uh, Aiden, I think Cross will get through, and I think it will be the game between Cause and Belidoff, which you can't easily say that Belidoff are going to win that because it's it's a it's a, a derby match, as they say. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I'm sure they'll, they'll they don't like each other, do they not? No. Like that is the see, they're the games now that I suppose when we're on about dead rubber games and stuff in a format like this, that's where that goes out the window. Cause yeah. Belidoff, no matter what it is out here, yeah. um, it actually is this. It is out here, yeah. It yeah. is, yeah. There's only one game, yeah. One There's game one game going to Abbey Dorley. Yeah, Cause Winner, yeah. Furter are yeah. playing in Abbey They have to be played um, at the same time or something, is that yeah. it? Yeah. Or are the Euro, is there a Euro game on here, no? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I think the Cause of the Love game is, is uh, what to decide the, the, the second team. And James, as the most knowledgeable man and the most, uh, with uh, 10, uh, with 8, uh, did you two on him? <laughs> with ten on the table, we call it ten on the yeah. table. With eight county championship medals, your considered opinion? I, I see, interesting to see again. how quite adapt. Yeah. Interesting to see how they adapt and yeah. carry the the mantle of champions. Interesting, because the last team to beat them were Belly Duff in the yeah. semi final two years ago. Yes, and you also have Cosu. I think that will drive them on. Those two injuries will drive them on yeah. even more. So. I call that group cause and belief. I'm right now, Crotter. I'm right now, only because I think 
the mental of champions might be tough. Yeah. And there's three teams in that group who want to have a right cut off champions. And yeah. what a group to be in as champions is a hard old Jesus. Why couldn't we get a soft group of champions and ease our way into it? Mm. They left hit the ground running now. Yeah. Straight away because every yeah. there's, yeah. there's automatically a bullseye on their back. Yeah. A bullseye is right there on their back now. Cross it. Everyone wants to beat you. Yeah. I'm afraid you're new to the table. This is a thing you have to live with. Like we've lived with it for a long time. You either can come up to it or fall on your ass. I'll tell you something. Jazzy Sean McGrath will absolutely blow <laughs> your theory out of the water, my friend. But uh, it could happen. And it's a game of opinions. And uh, that's quite open. So there now we've gone through the three groups. We've gone through all the permutations, etc. We'll have one quick. Now we're running short on time. So we'll have a quick run through uh, just a, uh, a, a couple of lines. Answer to everyone just on the games over the weekend. And then we'll give our predictions to wrap this up. So we start on Friday night. And we'll start with you, Tommy, on Friday night. Lixna, injuries, Parnells. New, obviously, um, to coming up from intermediate first year up uh, Friday night. How do you see that game going? Uh, it's a comprehensive win for Lixna, no doubt. John, would you be on board? Yeah, Lixna to win comfortably enough. Aiden? Yeah, yeah. You'll be on the same wavelength. And uh, you fancy panels, do you, uh, <laughs> no. James? No. Lixna to win, but not, not by landslide. Not, not by, by landslide. landslide. No, yeah. they don't have the scoring trace. Yeah, fair play. Right, we move on to Saturday. We've got Kilmiley against Barry Haig. Um, that's the first game at 5.30. It will be live on Clubber, remember? Um, and uh, James, I'm going to ask you first, Ooh. put you on the spot because <laughs> by the way you're talking, yeah, I, we're think, oh, I think Kilmiley are we down want him about turn up. sixth. We won't even turn up. In the rankings. No, we're not, at the moment, now we're way down there. We're downbeat. Yeah, but... you've got injuries and Barry <laughs> Haig have Colin Walsh back and they have a local councillor, Michael Lean, behind them. Um, halfway up a ladder with a flag. So, how are you going to get on? An we, arrow win for Kilmiley. Squeak it out, maybe. Squeak it out. Just about. Just about. Violin, please, Mr. Producer. <laughs> just about, yeah. I just think. about. Well, just yeah. about, I think. Yeah, I think just it's going to be a good game. Uh, I think Kilmiley will win it probably, but I think it'll be a good game. Aiden? Yeah, I, uh, I hope Freddie Hyde Lads haven't overexerted themselves celebrating uh, the council win. I think Kilmiley will win it. Yeah. I, I think there'll be no... Yeah, really yeah because Kilmiley want to win every game. Yeah, and every just, competition. Look, they're, 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 every year. They're more... They're, they're going to win that. They're more professional yeah. side. Is that what you're trying to say? No, they're just going to win it. So yeah, they're just going to win it. Barry Duff and St. Brendan's. That's interesting now, John. Yeah. It should be a, a hard-fought encounter. And as Tommy said, uh, there is potential in the St. Brendan's team. But... Uh, as James has mentioned, with Podge Boyle and Mikey being there from the start of the season with no intercounty commitments, I think Ballyduff are raring to go. Um, I expect them to win on Saturday. What about? I think I'll hedge my bets. Don't be hedging now. We'll both be shadow boxing. <laughs> we will. We will. <laughs> right. And uh, what do you think that one will go, uh, Aidan? Where now are we? We're now at uh, Belly Duff and Brendan. Uh, I do think Belly Duff, uh, yeah, Belly Duff to get the win there. Yeah, and uh, James? If they can get the players they want on the field, I can see Belly being beaten. But it just depends what players they can get onto the field. Because St. Brendan's pace and power, they, I, I, there's a good bit in St. Brendan's. Oh, we saw him against Kilmiley earlier in the year. There's a nice bit and a nice bit of hurling in. Yeah. And the same evening I saw him, Young Hogan, they sent the forward, a new lad they have in. Good yeah. hurler. Yeah. Fernand Egan and Savage causing trouble. Nathan Driscoll, they were causing trouble. And, and that was without, I think, the same evening. I know it was Dahi even playing that evening, or Eric wasn't playing. So there's a bit in them. It'll be a, it'll be a real cracker of a game. I won't be going home after the Kilmiley match. I'll be hanging out watching that one. I'll be sitting down enjoying it. Yeah. And I think if Bell looked at the right team in the field, they'll win it. But sure, you told us already, uh, Kilmiley are going to lose the first game. So you're going to go home. Cry into my tea. <laughs> right, we've got the Sunday evening's game. And that's the final one. It's a big one. It's the county champions against, was the champions of the year before? Uh, could have been. Uh, yeah. Crata yeah. versus Causeway. Yeah. Uh, we start with you, Tommy, as you the reasonable voice. Probably the best game of the weekend. That's a really one to look forward to. Uh, no shadow boxing there, I would think. Uh, Crata, probably from the experience of last year, remember their, their appearances or their displays in Munster Club. They won the county league. You know, I think mm -hmm. they're on and up. And 
they look like a team that want to stay there I'd fancy Crotty Right John what would you think? Yeah definitely the game of the weekend um, obviously the loss of Jason Diggins in particular is huge for Causeway and just from seeing Crotty two weeks ago they're probably more battle hardened at this early stage of the season to go into a game like this while Causeway might take their time to get up to full speed so a Crotty victory uh, Eden um, first draw of the championship <laughs> first draw of the championship you don't, you don't like I'll I'll pretty right. it, I'll right. I, I'm pretty much going to pick one draw a week I would say in the championship and this <laughs> yeah. is the game that is most likely to be a draw do you know what happens to fellas who sit in the fence you know you'll <laughs> need it really sick of with the play there, like. yeah but I mean <laughs> we know that although they're in the same parish you don't like Crotter, right? <laughs> you earlier said that you liked Causeway, you liked Stephen Goggin, and you put him forward <laughs> as the Kerry manager yeah. contender. And now he won't side with his team, so you're going with a draw. But no, I just think, to... draw yeah. game, I just think, you know, and yeah. that throws a spanner in the works then for that, uh, for that. That could be a huge point for Causeway. Yeah, Cause it could be points last year, right? Could be yeah. points, yeah. yeah. James, yeah, you, you, you're, Causeway, you're actually going down the road, aren't you, of possibly a Causeway, well, not an upset, a but a Causeway win there. I wouldn't I wouldn't see it as an upset. Causeway had caught a beaten Baron Adam, Sullivan, Save here. That was it. Causeway had won, which, as Led yeah. said, down to the bones, down yeah. to the actual bones yeah. of their team. They were down to, at that stage, there was fellas hanging off at every angle on the Causeway bench, on the Causeway team. So don't be surprised to see Causeway beat Crotter. But then again, as John O'Dowd said last weekend, like Johnny said about the game against Kilmiley, there's a bit about them. And they have a structure and they have a system which works. Killian Trent's given a free role as a ball winner because Rory Magny sits in as sweeper. So you always have a centre back, have a half back line. Killian Trent then becomes a, a danger in the opposite end of the field. They have a nice system going. Shane Nolan was top class that evening. They seem to create a lot of space. The way they're playing, their brand of hurling is good. Mm -hmm. Their brand of hurling is good, but Causeway can match their hurling. They really are good hurlers. Well, I'd be two of us go for a draw there. Yeah. Two, I think two the fiber be going on because that's going to be so close that's going to be very hard to call I have never <laughs> met <laughs> for a man who was supposed to be in a savage horror who took team, down very who, team. who took down more what I, I mean team, the yellow really. bellies will call you the yeah. two of you I mean in all so well, could meek. be correct could be yeah. correct but if you're right at the end of the day we'll be all saying well <laughs> Uh, Mystic James got it right and Mystic Aiden. <laughs> so look, we've gone through the games, we've gone through the format, we've gone through the, uh, the various groups and we are hope that it's going to be an exciting championship. And as I said uh, before, and I'll allow the, the boys just about a minute now to think about who they reckon is going to get to the semi-final, the four teams. And I want the two finalists and then I want to nail down. Before we start, obviously, this Friday, I want to nail down a possible winner again a lot will depend and we might allow people to review uh when the knockout stages start just before they start their semi-finals but not their final the final one that they'll pick that the team they'll think will be champion they do it tonight this is where hard men uh, like myself and tommy uh, win out and uh, the guys who are not so hard the like softies. Uh, the softies <laughs> like uh, like uh, our, our great friend James and Aiden, that's where <laughs> they falter. They're not up to it really. So uh, again, um, we will go now around the table. Remember that comprehensive coverage in Clover, you can buy the annual pass. Just click into the clover.ie, uh, click on there and you'll see all the information that you want. And it, particularly if you're abroad, if you want the lads that have gone to Australia or America, or England or Hong Kong or wherever or Dubai you can see it it's for the diaspora and you don't have to have played hurling the H Kerry hurling championship is one of the most colorful championships the crowds that come here and um, the semi-finals and finals are brilliant days the atmosphere uh, the local rivalry the passion you can hear it from James and he's about 20 years since he played hurling seriously um, it just shows that there is a real buzz about this championship. Okay, we might quibble about vomit, about dead rubbers, but at the end of the day, the Garvey Senior Hurling Championship this year is going to be exciting and we will bring it all, I was going to say to your bedrooms, we'll bring it all to your sitting rooms <laughs> and we'll bring it all uh, to you if you can't make the games. Obviously, we'd like you to come to the games. If you can't make the games, you can actually watch it at home. And again, remember, Father's Day this coming weekend. I'll be expecting a freebie on that one from one of my lads. Now, 
We'll turn finally before we close this uh, uh, edition of the Senior Hurling Championship preview tonight. We'll turn to Tommy. Tommy, your four that you think would reach the semi final. Tricky one at this stage, but, uh, but I would say Kilmiley, um, Ballyduff, Crata, and St. Brendan's. Crata <laughs> and St. Brendan's. Now, tell me this. I know you're a librarian and I know you move books around in a, you know, and you have Terminus certain and you have an alphabetical order and all that. And you have the archives, the historical archives, which I often looked up myself in Kerry O'Shea. Uh, but how the hell did you move St. Brendan's in there? <laughs> Number one, they have no players. Number two, they're using it uh, as uh, for the next couple of years as a kind of planning. And all of a sudden I find them on in the semi-final. <laughs> you couldn't go home. Uh, <laughs> great answer, Tommy. Great answer. John, as Tabert, have no influence at all in this. You're particularly neutral. Uh, um, I mean, I have at least two or three clubs uh, yeah, playing for me. Correct. No, I'm going to go with three of the clubs that um, Tommy just picked out there. I Kilmiley. think Ballyduff, Kilmiley and Crotta will all make the semi-finals. And I'll go with my dark horse, Abby Dorney. You see, you're trying to please the man next to you because I know you'll be commentating with him at some stage and he could leave you in the lurch and, <laughs> and, and we'd, be, we'd have nothing. Now, Aidan, uh, now listen to me, you. Uh, there are certain constraints uh, under the laws of uh, the land. So uh, I can't say what I want to say, but I just want to know uh, who do you think is going to make the last four? And please don't let Abby Dorney be in it. Go on. Come on, Crata. Yeah. Crata. Causeway. Causeway. And Abby Dorney. Oh. Ooh. Abby Dorney. Down, they if would I be went back to Dorney without picking up, like, back yeah. there, I would be... I know, yeah. Uh, you would be disowned. So. Yeah, yeah. You would be absolutely disowned. Uh, now, uh, this is probably one of the most exciting, most emotional moments of our <laughs> show tonight. We've got James <laughs> McCarthy. Eight, I was going to say All-Ireland medals, but no. Eight county championship senior medals. He might win, to, win an intermediate before he passes on, but if he doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't worry, right? It doesn't worry him. But he has the knowledge because he's been in the trenches, just like Tommy has, in fairness, although he slipped in St. Brennan's to the <laughs> So let's see how far down Kilmiley would be fourth anyway, but there'll be three more. So, James. Yeah, Kilmiley sneak into the quarterfinals. <laughs> yeah, okay. Causeway, Belly Duff and Crata and Kilmiley Crata final. Causeway, uh, sorry, Kilmiley Causeway, Belly Duff. And Crata. And Crata. Crata Kilmiley final. It's a Crata v Kilmiley final. Barring the draw, to win the draw. A draw. To win uh, the draws. And who's going to win it? Kilmiley. Of course. <laughs> right? James is going for Kilmiley, right? James, you started off tonight, we had to play a violin with all the injuries you yeah. had. If yeah. you don't get past the group stages and if oh, you're I won't. preliminary... I never can be seen or heard. You never can be seen or, <laughs> or heard. heard. Well, I think you might be seen, but you certainly would be heard. <laughs> um, Aidan, uh, give me the semi-finalists from your four... Uh, the finals, oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, I could obviously say, as much as I love Abby Dorney to be in a final and win it this year, I do think it'll be a Kilmiley Causeway final. Kilmiley Causeway final. And who to win it? You're your hurling <laughs> man. You're um, carry manager. It's toss up to you. are carry manager. I would say, look. Uh, don't give me a draw. Strength, full strength cause it. I think win the championship this year. But with the two guys they're missing, I think uh, they make it almost all the way. I think Kilmiley win it. Kilmiley win it. So that's two votes for Kilmiley in the final. John, you had uh, Kilmiley, Belly Duff, Crot and Abby Dorney. Isn't that right? Yeah, I'd like, I'd like again, uh, like Aidan, I'd love to see the fairy tale happen like Crotta last year with Abby Dorney this year, um, going all the way to the final for the 50th anniversary. But I don't think it will. I'm going to go for a Ballyduff Crotta final. And I'm going to break James McCarthy's heart here. And I'm going to say that Ballyduff are going to be oh, champions and they're going to make it 26 26 <laughs> at the end of this season. This Bally is coming from Man United now. It's coming from Man United, fellow. Yeah, really, really. Yeah, against, yeah, yeah. Against, you're Liverpool, are you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, the rivalry's there already. The rivalry's there already, even in the panel. Yeah, that that's the fairly intense. Belly Duff, obviously, 
there are a lot of people, I won't even say dark horses, no. but it depends on the injuries and how, but if they perform, they could get there. Yeah, with no to skill and uh, Otis Belly Duff and Crotty, you in the final. So yeah, you, you, I was tempted to go Belly Duff and Kilmiley, but that would have been even worse for James to take if I said that. Yeah, you actually don't have uh, Kilmiley in the semi final. You believe you go to the quarter final? <laughs> no, no, I had them there with Crotta, Abby Dorney. And oh, you had the, the first that. team, yeah, yeah, I wrong you there. I thought you had him gone to the quarter final stage. No, no. Which would be a real anti Liverpool. <laughs> uh, Tommy, you had uh, St. Brendan's, obviously, they're beaten in the semi final. You've crossed uh, <laughs> Bally Duff and Kilmiley. Who do you think uh, to be? I suppose realistically, I think Bally Duff and Kilmiley in the final and Bally Duff to win. I think it's probably experience and your fellas coming in fresh that weren't there with the county this year. Experienced players against Kilmiley, who probably a lot of up and coming players, you know. So yeah. Bally Duff to win. Yeah, well, I'm going, uh, obviously, casting my, vote. my choice is the casting vote, and my choice and my theories are the most important of this whole panel. <laughs> who didn't you, we pick? You all know that. So <laughs> I'm going down somewhere. and trying to wonder who didn't she pick. No, I think in the last four, we're going to have, uh, somebody write this down, because I'm not going to yeah. remember it. No more than um, remember. remember <laughs> I'm going to have Kilmoyley in the semi-final. I'm going to have uh, Crata in the semi-final. I'm going to have Bally Duff in the semi-final and I'm going to have Causeway in the semi-final. I'm going to have Crotter in the final and they're going to be playing... Um, yeah, i got to remember my sons. Um, <laughs> their <coughs> grandparents and uncles and aunts are Causeway. Um, I think it'll be a Crotter... Uh, Bally Duff or Causeway. I'm, I'm strewn between the two. Uh, you gave use for support Gaza here and defend like you're yeah, picking up yourself. Yeah, no, because you have picked them, I will go <laughs> against them. Um, so I think it will be a Crotter Belly Duff final and uh, Crotter are my county champions. Second year in a row, my own club, I live very close to. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think uh, that uh, Crotter could very well uh, win it. Now we will give one opportunity before the quarterfinals of changing. Uh, a preference maybe would that be ideal because we know how they played etc our fellas injured and to be only fair but we have can a nominator or semi final but certainly for the final to name your finalist and your outright winner uh, at that stage what do you think makes sense. makes sense yeah okay very little probably made sense tonight we hope you <laughs> enjoyed uh, this preview it's the first one we did as I said brought you in in association with club we'd like to thank uh, Kerry GA and Peter Twish uh, Patrick O'Sullivan and Sweeney for uh, giving us this room here in the Austin Stack Pavilion. Um, I'd like to thank, obviously, also um, the lads, uh, Tommy, thank you very much, John, Aidan and James, thanks, and uh, it's been excellent, I really enjoyed it. And uh, also a very big thank you to the man who made all this possible. That's John C. O'Shea, our producer. He's behind the camera, he, so he's camera shy, so you won't see him often unless you call to JC's bar, Texas bar in uh, High Street, I think it's in Killarney. If it's a new street, it's the wrong pub uh, in High Street in Killarney. <laughs> and you go in there and maybe buy a pint. That's a free ad now. I can do no more for, for John C. Um, I haven't been in his uh, big office yesterday. Uh, and uh, also, uh, I'd like to say uh, I'd wish the teams the best, all 10 teams. Uh, I think we've been fair to everybody. Especially, and of course the referees who form a big part of this as well. Let's hope that we have a very, very good senior hurling championship this year. I thank the sponsors, Garvey's group as well. They've been very good to Kerry GA and to the hurling people. And let's hope that we have some excitement and a lot of scores and a few surprises. And maybe, because some more panellists suggested, the odd draw. So for now, it's goodbye from me, Mortimer Murphy. <laughs>